If you have seen the nameplate of current transformer, you would have seen a warning written on it. All the secondary terminals to be shorted when not in use. And if you don't do it, it can cause complete failure of the CT. Uh, there can be uh, insulation failure. There can be a fire. And if somebody is working in the vicinity of that particular current transformer, then there can be serious consequences of that as well. And in this video, we are going to understand why that happens and why we cannot keep the secondary of the current transformer open circuited. To get the details, you need to watch the video. Hello there, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gaurav J. On this channel, I simplify electrical engineering so that you can understand the different complicated terms in a very easy way. If you are interested, then definitely you should consider subscribing because there is a lot of content on this channel that is going to be of really help to you, right? So now let us talk about why we cannot keep the secondary of current transformer open circuited. But before that, you must have a clear understanding about the working principle of current transformer. Now we have already talked about that in our previous video. If you haven't seen that, I'll provide a link for it down in the description. You can go and check it out. But here, one more time, I'll brief you about that. Now, uh, the construction of current transformer and the regular power transformer is a bit different. But for understanding, we'll just proceed with the regular transformer, what you can see on your screen. So we have a supply EG here. There is a primary winding, there is a secondary winding. We have connected load Z uh, to our secondary winding, right? Now, when you connect the load to the uh, secondary of the transformer, the current I1 and I2 starts flowing. Now, if you keep this transformer open circuited, there won't be any current flowing at the primary side in case of ideal transformer. But in case of practical transformer, there will be small amount of current that will be flowing in order to serve the core losses of the transformer, right? So that is I1 and I2. Now, when I1 is flowing, the I1 will produce its own magnetomotive force, which is given by N1 times I1. N1 is what? N1 is the number of turns at the primary side and I1 is the primary current that is flowing, right? Now, when there is a magnetomotive force, definitely there will be flux and that flux is given by phi 1, which is only produced by the current I1, right? And that is given, some part of that is getting linked with the secondary uh, of the transformer in line with the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which is given by phi m1. Now, m is the mutual linking. So, wherever you see m, that is mutual linking. So, phi m1 right and some part of that flux is not getting linked with the secondary winding which is what we call as the leakage flux and that is given by phi f1 right so basically phi1 will be having two portions phi m1 and phi f1 phi m1 is getting linked with the secondary winding and phi f1 is not getting linked with the secondary winding which is getting linked with the surroundings let's say for example air and that is what we call as the leakage flux understood clear what is happening in i1 now imagine if there is no load uh, and we are only having the i1 small amount of i1 so there will be only phi1 flux available in the core and that is causing the secondary uh, emf es right but since here we have a load what is happening is there is current i2 is flowing and that i2 will produce its own magnetomotive force which is given by n2 by N2 times I2. N2 is secondary turns and I2 is secondary current. Again, if there is a magnetomotive force, definitely there will be flux. So that flux is given by phi2. And again, some part of that flux is getting linked with the primary of the transformer, right? And some part is not getting linked, which is what we call as the secondary leakage flux, and that is given by phi f2. So phi2 is having two portions, phi m2, which is the flux getting linked with the primary. And the flux that is not getting linked with the primary is phi f2, right? That is the leakage flux, right? Understood? Now there are two fluxes in our core. One is produced by I1, one is produced by I2. 
and both these flux are in opposite direction to each other so definitely the resultant flux the resultant flux in the transformer will be the uh, difference between these two fluxes right and that is given by phi m2 right a flux mutual flux mutual or phi m will always be lesser than the flux produced by any of the currents right so standalone flux produced by our current uh, i1 phi1 will always be greater than the flux phi m here right that is very important because what i am going to explain next uh, it depends upon that right so phi m is always lesser than the flux produced by any of the standalone currents and this phi m is actually responsible for this secondary voltage es right this is the net flux and that is uh, responsible for the es clear understanding uh, what i am telling here now this is about the regular transformer now when we talk about the current transformer they are little bit different than this let us understand that now so in current transformer there will be only one winding which is the secondary winding right the primary winding is basically nothing but the conductor of which we need to measure the current so you can consider the example of transmission line the transmission line will act as a primary conductor for current transformer or primary winding for current transformer right clear and this current transformer are connected in series and hence it is also known as the series transformer and the biggest difference in the regular transformer and the current transformer is that now irrespective of the fact that whether there is some load connected on the secondary or not there will be always current flowing in the primary always it doesn't matter if there is a load connected on the secondary or not there will always be current flowing in the primary of the current transformer why is that because we have connected it in series for example again i am taking the example of transmission line and transmission line will always be carrying current right so in primary of the current transformer there will be always current available doesn't matter if there is uh, the secondary current is there or not in the regular transformer we saw that the primary current is also dependent upon the secondary current now i have created a dedicated video a circuit simulation where i have explained what is the impact of secondary current on the primary side of the transformer you can watch that i'll provide link for it down in the description in that simulation it is very much clear that when you change the load that means when you change the current on the secondary side it is directly affecting the current on the primary side right that is in case of regular transformer but in case of current transformer there is no dependency of the primary current on the secondary current and that is the issue that is the reason why you cannot keep the uh, secondary open circuited i'll explain you about that also uh, in coming slides so what is happening is uh, there will be always phi 1 available whether there is phi 2 available or not right and as a result there can be a situation let's say if the secondary is open circuited the net flux a will be equal to the flux produced by the primary current of the current transformer and as i mentioned the uh, phi m is always lesser than the any individual flux if the secondary is flowing but if there is no secondary the phi m will be equal to the phi 1 and which can be very high so in a regular situation let's take uh, the phi m is basically phi 1 minus phi 2 but if the secondary is open circuited there won't be any phi 2 right so phi m is basically equal to phi 1 and which can be very huge and that can produce a very high voltage at the secondary you will get this uh, more clearly when we look at the example let's go to the example here so let's say this is situation 1 uh, a regular situation we have a current transformer connected to a transmission line which is of 36 kv the primary current is 1000 ampere the primary turn is single turn so only one turn is there the number of secondary turn is 1000 uh, the secondary current is 1 ampere and the 
meter that we have connected to the secondary of the transformer the resistance of that is 2 ohms right this is the primary of our current transformer and this is the secondary which we have connected to a meter this is situation one now in this situation let's say if you have to calculate the voltage drop across the meter we can do that using a very simple formula which is secondary current times the resistance of the meter and if you put the values into it the result that you will get is only two volts right so in the regular situation you can see the voltage drop across the meter is only two volts right this is fine no issues with that now what we will do in situation two we will remove the ammeter or the meter and then we'll see what happens right so we have removed the uh, ammeter here the secondary of the current transformer is completely open circuited now what is happening with the flux again you have to take uh, note of that now in the transformer the phi m is basically phi 1 right there is no phi 2 to opposite so it is only phi 1 so definitely this flux will be very very high this will cause the core to saturate and the secondary voltage across it is going to be very very high let me show you show that to you so here uh, we, we will calculate the what is the voltage now at the secondary using the transformation ratio which is uh, voltage primary divided by voltage at secondary is equals to number of primary turns divided by number of secondary turn we will rearrange this formula to get the uh, voltage across secondary so this is how it will be now let us put the values in this formula so 36 kV is the line voltage so 36 into 1000 to convert it into volts uh, into the number of secondary terms which is 1000 divided by primary terms which is 1 and if you calculate it further the result is voltage across secondary is 36,000 kilo volts that is huge huge voltage right so if you compare it with the primary side it is almost thousand times of the primary voltage and the question is whether your secondary or the current transformer is capable is designed to carry this huge voltage of course the answer is no and this huge voltage will put a lot of pressure on the insulation of the secondary which will be failed of course eventually and there can be a fire there can be a big blast if somebody is working near that there is a question of his life basically there so you can imagine how big how huge that voltage can get if you keep the secondary open circuited what is the reason the reason is that there is no flux opposing the flux produced by the current i1 right and hence the phi m is very huge because of which the core is getting saturated and this much amount is this much voltage is getting produced at the secondary side of the current transformer right and that is the reason why you must not keep the secondary open circuited if you are not putting any load any burden on the secondary make sure you put a short circuit link to that and that is what is return also return on the nameplate of the current transformer right understood why it is important so that is all about it if you found this video helpful then do like this video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing this as well so if this was helpful comment helpful so that i can understand this is uh, helping you guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching Keep learning.